Hey recap lovers, welcome back. Today's movie will be a 2016 German war drama film titled Alone in Berlin. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Amidst a seemingly quiet and peaceful forest, a young soldier by the name of Hans Quangel frantically runs away, fearing for his life. Unknown to him, he eventually runs toward the middle of the forest and ends up being shot twice in his chest, critically injuring him. As he takes his final breath, he ends up in the middle of soldiers whose allegiance is against one another. He dies with his eyes open, the shock of his life being cut off at a young age. After the war, the Nazis finally overthrew the French soldiers, with Germans celebrating the victory of yet another battle of their Fuhrer, Hitler. In Berlin, a postwoman named Eva gives out letters, and one of the receivers of letters are Otto and Anna Quangel. Anna prepares herself for the worst by taking notes and knowing that it is from the military post. She shakingly opened the letter and couldn't believe her own eyes that the life of their only son had gone too soon during combat. She frustratingly tears the letter into pieces and pours out her anger towards her husband and Hitler. Otto tries to comfort her, but with Anna being too devastated by the news, he can only make her coffee before going to work. Thinking that Anna is the only one affected by it, he firmly grabs onto the handle of the stairs showing signs that he is also as heartbroken as his wife. On the higher floor, Eva pities the Quangels and quickly diverts her attention to an elderly Jew named Rosenthal. She routinely gives her food since Jews are forbidden to go outside, or they will be sent to concentration camps. Moments later, Anna tries to put the pieces of the letter back while her husband has no other choice but to continue his day at work. Trying to live another typical day, she keeps zoning out while buying groceries and eventually storming out of the shop, where Eva leads her home. As Otto returns home, he sits in his son's room while going through his things. He then finds Hitler's picture in between his son's book and alters its words from the Führer to the Lugner, meaning, the liar. The next day, he attends a Nazi party meeting, where Nazis inform individuals like Otto. The latter is in the working class, regarding the increase in sales and production for the Germans. He courageously calls out fellow Germans who lays off at work, to which, among the crowd, Dolphus thinks that he's just selfish and asks if he ever donates to Hitler. He coldly replies by informing everyone that he did, in fact, contribute his only son to the war, who died in combat for Hitler. Back at their home, members of the Nazi Women's Party members knock at their door, informing Anna that they are to visit homes as scheduled. So they go to the first house on their list, where the owner is being picked on by the others for wasting her life in her addiction while her husband is fighting the war. Hearing the woman's words reminds Anna of the pain of losing her son in the war, so she quickly flees from the scene and returns home. On the other hand, Otto sits in his son's bedroom again, only to find an unfinished head sculpture of his son. With Anna sleeping on the chair and waiting for Otto, she is shocked to hear from him that he wants her wife to not open their door to anyone. He continues to write something on a card, to which she is curious about what her husband is doing, so she comes closer. She is then baffled in knowing Otto is actually writing phrases against Hitler, with his first card written with mother, the Fuhrer murdered my son, he will murder your son too. Pass this card on. Meanwhile, Emil Barkhausen and Enno Kluge sneakily enter Rosenthal's apartment, hoping to steal her belongings. Fortunately, Rosenthal sees them and quickly leaves her apartment using another door. The two men are then surprised to see their neighbors, the Persik, who also have the same ill motives for robbing the old Jew. While an argument bursts upstairs, Rosenthal asks for help from Anna and Otto. Disturbed by her frantic knocks, Anna, without a doubt, lets her inside, where she hugs Anna as she is thankful that they had saved her from danger and spends her night sleeping soundly in their coach. Before dawn breaks, she chooses to return to her apartment, but her from abruptly stops her, leading her to his apartment unknown to them that Emil can see them from downstairs. Inside, From explains that it is safer for her to refrain from returning to her apartment at the moment and allows her to stay in his deceased daughter's room. In the morning, Otto prepares his things before placing his written card in a public place. As he is about to leave, Anna shows up next to him, dressed up to go outside. Seeing her, he refuses his wife to be part of such a dangerous act of his and tries to scare her by saying that Germans also hang women. But, with her firm decision, he eventually agrees to let Anna help him spread the truth about Hitler's deadly regimen. They ultimately carry on with their plan. Upon reaching their destination, he instructs his wife to stay on the other side of the building and let him do the job himself. 
with the tension building up while he continues to go upstairs, he finally finds a great spot to put his card, which is by the stairs. As he rushes to leave, he catches sight of the first man who notices his card before he quickly goes back to meet with Anna. After their scheme goes according to their plan, the couple shares a shot of liquor to mark the beginning of them finally being free from being apolitical and against Hitler. At the same time, Frum continues to explain to Rosenthal and firmly tells her to never go outside since once she does, he will act as if he has never met her in his life. She then tells him of her wanting to be there when her husband arrives, but Frum breaks the reality to her that her husband will never come back, not under the Nazis' hands. Baldur Persik shows up outside the apartment with the authorities and an investigator, to which Rosenthal sees them from upstairs. Emil considers this opportunity to tell them the whereabouts of the old Jew that they are looking for. So the investigator goes to check on Frum's apartment. Attempting to save Rosenthal's life, he tries to threaten the investigator into having connections with his higher-ups. However, the investigator doesn't fall for his tricks and continues to look inside his apartment. As Frum grows weary in knowing that he and Rosenthal are about to get caught, he is puzzled that the investigator didn't find Rosenthal in his daughter's room. Unknown to him, she had already snuck back to her apartment to save him from getting in trouble. Hearing Baldur and the investigator finally enter her apartment, she quickly goes to Baldur to reminisce about their memories when he was a young boy and compliment him on how he is already a grown man. She then leaves a soft stricken Baldur and goes with the authorities. While Baldur and the investigators see that the sound they are hearing is from Rosenthal's pet bird, the guard suddenly shouts at Rosenthal to stop her from jumping out the window. But, unfortunately, she chooses to end her life then spend her remaining days at the hands of the Nazis. Seeing her dead body from the window, Baldur is too stunned to speak. Meanwhile, Emil takes this opportunity to steal the bracelet of the dead Jew. Later that day, Inspector Escherich enters the scene and sees Rosenthal's dead body, along with Otto. He had just come back from work. As the two meet eye to eye, Otto quickly goes upstairs to their apartment. Inspector Escherich follows along, curious about this fellow. As he hurriedly enters his home and promptly locks their door, Inspector Escherich looks at their door for a moment before continuing to go upstairs to Rosenthal's apartment. Meanwhile, the couple is both desolated by the tragic death of their beloved neighbor. At Rosenthal's apartment, the investigator rebukes Emil and his unlawful acts. However, Inspector Escherich has a different ideology. He lets Emil free from his punishments, resulting in the investigator walking out of the scene. He then notices Rosenthal's bird and lets it free through the apartment window. As Eva goes about her usual routine of bringing food to Rosenthal, she is shocked to see her doors have already been sealed by the authorities. And she confirms her suspicion by asking her from about what happened to Rosenthal. Still, he refuses to tell her anything, leaving her distressed by the elderly Jew's loss. With yet another life lost under the Nazis' hands, Otto continues to write on cards, denouncing the Nazis' inhumane acts. In between such days, he also proceeds to finish his son's head sculpture while remembering that his son is the reason for them to carry on spreading the truth. With no more cards at hand, he then goes to a shop to buy more and even asks for some gloves. However, a group of guards enters the same store, and so he quickly pays for the card and disregards buying gloves in the shop. His cards had finally reached the authorities, specifically as Cherich and his partner. Rather than going through town looking for the culprit of the cards, he instead suggests that they can only wait until the hobgoblin makes a mistake. Days later, Anna then goes to a wealthy German home to talk with the wife of an Obersturmbanführer. She then calls her out of not working for Hitler as mandated, which greatly infuriates the rich woman. Her acts resulted in her fellow Nazi women's party dismissing her from visiting houses, thinking that she acted this way due to the loss of her son, as they see Hans' picture with Otto's gloves. As the women leave, Anna tells him that she thought that they were almost caught because of the gloves, but luckily they weren't. As the days pass, Otto spreads these letters stealthily and has not been caught since they started. Finally, one night during an alarm wailing in town, the couple chooses to place a note at another public place, with Otto almost being caught by the building's owner. Luckily, they had already planned it, with Anna buying time for Otto to hide from the man and escape together afterward. With the alarming increase of such cards in public places and reaching SS officer Prawl, he threatens S. Cherich to quickly find the perpetrator. At night, after Anna and Otto share a heartfelt embrace, the owner of the last place they had been to reports his facial features to the authorities. 
Knowing the details of his face, the German guards quickly heighten their security faster as days go by. Unknown to the investigator, he had already bumped into the man they were looking for as he went down the train. Upon arriving home, Otto is greeted by the sculptured head of his son and Anna, realizing that it is Hans' birthday and ending their night with a toast for their son. The following day, news arrived as a reported arrest of a suspect in the Hobgoblin case occurred. Anna then brings his husband's lunch to work, but knowing he didn't make it to work, she frantically runs to the police station. Seeing that the suspected perpetrator is caught, she fears that it is Otto. Still, to her surprise, Otto shows up behind her and is curious to see who they caught that's why he didn't go to work. Going back home, she worries about her husband's actions and that his life means much more to her now. Hearing her words, Otto can't help but give an affectionate kiss to his wife, and they continue to make love amidst their protest against Nazism. At the police station, Enno was the one whom they deemed as the Hobgoblin. But upon knowing further information, Escherich is sure that he isn't the one they're looking for, so he lets him go. Unfortunately, this detail is brought upon Prawl once again, so he summons Escherich and beats him up, forcing him to kill Enno even though he is innocent. Afraid of the SS, he has no choice but to resort to violence and end Enno's life, deeming it a suicide. After taking the life of an innocent man, he is greeted with yet another card of Otto on his desk, which frustrates him even more. Years went by, and Otto's card had reached more than 200 in many different places, and the authorities could still not catch him. Finally, he is brought to another factory in the area of an absent worker, allowing him to get his card with him again. While placing his bag and coat in the office, he is shocked that the card has fallen from his damaged pocket. This mistake eventually leads Escherich and the authorities to investigate the factory. They finally take Otto for interrogation and his wife from their home. Escherich begins to show him the locations of all the cards reported to them, 267 cards to be exact, and 18 cards that weren't turned in. Finally, Otto agrees to confess to his wife being set free, to which Escherich agrees. After that, he goes to meet the SS officers torturing Otto and unwillingly joins in their cruel acts, afraid of Prawl. The court ruling of the Quangels finally comes, with the both of them just happy to see each other again while holding one's hands and accepting their faith. And on the day of their death sentence, Escherich meets Otto again, who is aggrieved at him for not keeping his promise of letting his wife go. Anna sadly suffers the same faith as him. As the Quangels are beheaded on that day, Escherich contemplates his current life choices. He admits that he is the only one who read all his cards, except for the 18 cards that weren't turned in. Eventually, he falls into guilt and throws the cards outside his window before ending his life, which is no longer worth saving that night. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.